SPIE presents the Advancing the Laser series, honoring 50 years of laser achievements. My name is Steve Jacques, and I'm here at the Oregon Health and Science University in Portland, Oregon. Uh, this is the laser lab, one of the laser labs. We have several here at this center. And for the past 20 years, I've been in this field of photomedicine, biophotonics, developing novel methods, optical methods for therapy as well as diagnostics. Diagnostics including imaging, spectroscopy, detection, therapy including thermal effects, photomechanical effects, and uh, uh, photochemical effects. The goal of our work is to have an impact in medicine and biology. The optical tools are unique tools which are not available to people in, in this field as a rule, although microscopy is an example widely used. And, and so our effort to bring novel methods into this field has been very well received and there's a lot of impact being made. The laser offered an opportunity for another field, the field of communications, to actually meld with what we were trying to do. A lot of the mathematical techniques in communication theory and, and signal processing has been able to be applied with this wonderful source of light, the laser, to give us optical coherence tomography, uh, interferometry that we never had before. Uh, and these have led to really novel approaches that we're only yet beginning to apply in medicine and biology. There's a great future ahead. There's such a payoff for actually having impact in medicine that uh, there, that's, a, that's a big plus in terms of, of, of personally how you feel about the work. But from an intellectual point of view, um, the, one of the things I like about lasers is, is, is that it brings in the element of time. And when you start playing with short pulses where Heisenberg's uncertainty principle comes in, and you start having to think about time and space and, and light in completely different ways from what you normally think, uh, that's been really exciting. To me, light is rather slow. You know, most people think, oh, light's instantaneous. But once you start working with it, light is rather slow. I mean, it takes a whole nanosecond to go a foot on this table. I'm waiting around for a whole nanosecond for that darn laser light to go this far. That's slow. At least when you, for people in our field who are actually working with light. So uh, that's a whole new perspective. And so that's intellectually stimulating. But one of the big areas of challenge, which I personally am interested in, is the molecular biology of the cell, the molecular biology of pathology and disease. And there's so much interest in that relationship between how external factors, cytokines, ligands, land on a cell and then trigger all these internal responses. Uh, if we could use optical methods to turn on and turn off the receptivity of these external receptors, or to go internal to the cell and turn on or turn off particular parts within a cell, I think that'd be a real tool for being able to flip a switch on or off and watch the repercussions uh, inside a cell. Now you couple that with, the, with the, all the novel work of the past decade or so with green fluorescent proteins and this type of reporter technology, and you've got a real opportunity to watch things change uh, when you flip a switch to turn on or turn off something in a cell. Another area which I think is really interesting, which we're pursuing, is the, um, the use of nanoparticles to be able to put a nanoparticle inside a cell and then track where it diffuses so that we can actually f get an image of the three-dimensional shape and distribution of sub-compartments within a cell and then to learn how manipulation of a cell causes these compartments to shift or change or the communication between compartments to change. I think this is a real challenging area and something that we're interested in. I also think that it's really important to study biology 
and be introduced to medicine. In our field, who are our clients? Who are our clients? They are the doctors and the biologists. They're on the other side of this fence. And as bioengineers, we sit on our side of the fence. Now, you might be very well schooled in optics or math, etc., but you can't hold a conversation with the guy on the other side of the fence. And that doesn't work because, in a way, you have to sell your ideas to the client. It's your job as a bioengineer to look over the fence, see what they're doing, and say, I have, I have the solution for you. I have what you need. Here, let me show you. Let me help you. This is a very exciting time for the field of biophotonics, photomedicine, and um, I feel real lucky to be part of it.